day, what did you guys have to relearn? Um, punch lists and, and general, like, end of day, putting everything together is, is kind of obnoxious. Um, it feels like there's only a couple things left, and then it's like, oh, I need this tool, which we don't have. Oh, and I need this supply or bracket or screw, which we don't have. And so we had to keep just kind of changing gears, and even though we only had a couple hours of work, um, it managed to take more than the whole day, so we still are not done. Um, but a couple of those things are just supply shortages that we're dealing with. Is there anything you had to relearn? Um, I want to say relearn. It's just more be patient with, uh, like she said, uh, supply shortages. Um, you know, we want to do the electrical box, but we can't finish that. So kind of stuck on that. Um, you know, it's just basically little things like, uh, as such as that. Um, I did have a problem with painting our door. I put too much paint on the top and it started to drip to the bottom. Um, so there's really no way to actually save that flatness to it. So I had to roll it all. Um, so that kind of stunk. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I wish I would have known all the supplies and things to ask for. Um, because a number of times today we would be filming and then have to stop because I was missing a screw or a clip or a, a gasket or a washer or a tool. Um, so that was, that made today's progress really difficult is just all those final little one-off things that you kind of leave till the end. Um, but we were still missing uh, the coax cable box. Um, we had to get different sink clips. We don't have clear silicone. So there's just a few things that we're still trying to work around um, to get closed out. Oh, I would say the door. Um... Just over spraying it too much, uh, started dripping down to the bottom. Um, other than that, oh, yeah, so back to the trim episode or uh, part where I told you you could put it if it's a little tight. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't listen to me. Um, yeah, cut it a little bit shorter, if anything, because uh, it could mess with your next piece, especially if like the wall is off a little bit or it's kind of indenting and, and you have a uh, Quarter inch gap. Yeah. Be patient. Don't put things off till the end if you can if you can finish them up. So if you've got two outlets left, just finish them. Um, because at the end, when you're doing your punch list, and especially as we're trying to move these out of here, it's gonna be really chaotic and everybody's gonna be running around looking for the Teflon tape or the clips. Um, so try to just get as much as you can done ahead of time and, and plan it out and then make sure you have everything when you're working so that you can move efficiently. Don't put caulk over your nail holes. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, it's just, it doesn't match the, the uh, trim properly. It kind of leaves a little mudgy look. And so you're probably gonna have to like repaint your trim and whatnot. Um, so try to avoid that. Wood filler. Yeah. Wood filler wood for filler. nails holes. Yeah, nail for sure. And uh, always use a sponge for your caulking, right? Make sure you have a nice straight line. Um, don't press too hard, don't press too lightly either, so, and don't get the sponge super soaked, so, a little bit in between. <laughs> Guess what, guys? It's punch list day. So, what you're going to need for tools today is going to really depend on what items you have left over, what little fixes that you need to have, so every individual house is going to have very different needs. Um, so in this case for today, we're not doing a tool inventory. You may very well need almost all of your tools or you may need very few. It's going to really depend on the individual build. Good morning. This is hopefully our final day on the build. So I've made myself a little punch list of all the things we have left to either fix, address, clean up, or finish. Um, so what I've got is we, we didn't paint our door when we painted. So we're getting our door painted today. We've got to put a doorknob on it. Um, we will put our sink in, and when we do that, we're going to connect the faucet and the drain first. Um, we also have a few baseboards to put in. Um, we are not doing baseboards out down the hallway. We'll let them complete those when they connect it to the other unit, but we will do the other remaining baseboards. I have just a few outlets left to put together, the stove outlet, and then you can see Corey's kind of fixed this and put this junction box in here. Um, we also need to build our breaker box outside. Uh, we'll set our HVAC um, up there on the wall, uh, take the tape off our exterior light, and then caulk all this um, door trim and baseboard that JC put up. 
And uh, once we do all that, we'll do a nice little deep clean and call it a day. So right now I'm getting this uh, piece of baseboard measured. Now, as you can see, it's a little too long. So I'll have to maybe take a 16th off or maybe, maybe not. Let's see how, if it pushes in your corner, sometimes, ooh, sometimes you can get away with the tight piece as long as it doesn't push your corner and start to crack. Um, and I don't think it is, so I might just run that. Yeah, see, it's not actually cracking my corner, so you can actually run that, um, which means put it in. Uh, it's just going to be tight and snug, but it's not going to crack anything. You're always more than welcome to take a 16th or hair off. Um, that way it fits nice and smooth. So come over here. I'll explain the, the other part that we're doing here. Uh, let me get a small piece here. Or maybe not. <clears throat> so this is a call or a toe kick. Our toe kick goes under our cabinet. Um, usually installed right there, as you can see, where I'm pointing at. Now, you have like about eight to a quarter gap sometimes. Sometimes it's nice to actually get your, um, uh, your toe kick in the actual uh, flooring. That way you can put a nice uh, bead of silicone and you won't have any leaks onto the floor. However, our flooring actually ran a little past it. So I had to make some adjustments to the top of it. And I'll just go ahead and run some silicone on there just in case if we do drop water, um, it'll be all good. And then that's about it. Uh, pretty simple day to day. We're just gonna get uh, work on wrapping things up. Uh, put our HVAC up, put our sink in, uh, clean her out, put our door in. Our actual countertops look really nice. As you can tell, we stain them. Back to the uh, baseboard, how do you mm -hmm. attach the baseboard? Are you going to caulk it? Are you going to glue it, nail? Oh, so with the, yeah, so with both of these, you always nail them with uh, your good old trusty pin nailer here. Um, yeah, I'll show you. So we come over here. So you do want to find your studs. Lucky for me, though. Now, these we don't get but I do have one myself. So this is called the stud finder. So you go ahead and find your stud, but I know there's one here in the corner. And you shoot her in right there. And then we'll go for the other one. Just gonna be, oops. So, look at here. So sometimes you actually do hit a screw. Oh, sorry, say that again. Sometimes you actually hit a screw that's um, in the drywall, right? Behind your texture and mud. So the actual nail will twist up and bend on you like this and it'll damage your piece. Um, all you can do about that is take it out and then with putty, go over it and um, try to make it look nice again. Uh, it does happen, so just kind of watch it. You know, if you do see a screw or something, try to uh, make sure you miss it. So, if you remember that one of the uh, the neutral wires broke off, so our fix was was to, was to put a hole down here, pull the wire back down, just feed it into this junction box. So, when I pulled the wire out, I, I attached this new wire to it, so we just pulled it through down into this box. So, now the old wire is in this box, and we have our jumper that runs up to here, and that's how we we solve that issue. So this one's going to get uh, cap and buried, so we're going to put a, a blank cover over it. The oven's going to hide it, so it's not a really a big deal. And then we'll continue on with our normal outlet up on top. Uh, so we're putting our HVAC plate on, uh, making sure I'm hitting studs. And there's two studs in your opening right here and here. So I just want to make sure you leave your opening and make sure it's level. Now this is the plate that's going to hold the uh, the mini split, right? Correct. And this, uh, these are your hooks for the top and your hooks for the bottom. So it'll just sit nicely in there and everything will, uh, all the hoses and everything will come out nicely from right there. And yeah, 
Just make sure it's level. Take your uh, two foot or foot level to it. Uh, torpedo level, that's what it's called. And that's about it. And I used uh, two inch screws because drywall screws won't do the trick. So um, it's completely leveled. We got it hung up now. So that's up there. We didn't install any of the pipes because someone else out, someone else is doing that. Uh, we also got all the caulking done. Uh, make sure that you guys take like a wet rag or definitely like a wet rag or a wet sponge. Not too wet, obviously, because your um, your baseboard is painted, so you know you don't want to get it soaked. Um, just make sure that you have enough water to get that line nice and smooth. Make sure it doesn't run over to your um, to your little lip right here. You just want it right here. All, all you want is caulk right along this. You don't want it here. You don't want it above here. You just want it running in a long straight line, uh, nice and smooth. Right in that groove you pointed, right? Yeah. Um, what else? So there's caulking. Now we went ahead and added these parts. How? What? Trim. Yeah, they're like a trim. I forget what they're called. However, um, you add them to this. This part right here, right next to your trim, cut you. I needed to cut that out and oscillate that, so just a little bit extra caulking in there. Um, and then you go ahead and put one over here just to kind of match it out. Um, you don't have to put them anywhere else. That's the only two places, three places that it, they're gonna be at. Um, got the door caulked as well. Still need say, to fill. Say, say that again. So, what do we have? so we got the door cocked as well. So you can see, again, straight line, nice and smooth, no gaps, no holes. Uh, take a wet rag or, you know, if you're skilled, a wet finger, but definitely a wet rag. Um, and then you still have your nail holes to fill out, get that dirtiness out of there, you know. Um, my partner went ahead and uh, put caulk on the uh, nail holes, which is not what you're supposed to do. You're actually supposed to put um, nail filler. It's a different texture, and caulk just kind of looks dirty, as you can tell. Um, it doesn't really match it correctly. Um, so we'll go ahead and clean that out. That's not a problem. Our door is still getting painted, so oh, sorry. we'll go ahead and hang that up. We we'll still need to clean up uh, around here. Get some of these windows nice and cleaned up. As you can see, some of our uh, caulk still showing there. So we'll need to clean that up, clean our windows up. When the caulk is showing like that, how do you take care of it with just a wet rag? Uh, well, that's actually a true thing. You can take care of it with a wet rag and like your fingernail. However, if you just want to do it the easy way, you take your putty knife. And you just go like that. And that gets most of that cut off right there. Now you don't want to take all of it off because then, you know, you're going to have to recalk it. Um, but see, as you can tell, even with my fingernail, you're able to get most of it off. So if you have like a wet rag and then you do your fingernail, that's going to come off pretty easily. Um, and then again, just make sure you don't get it all off because it's still, uh, you're caulking for your corners, so... I want to mess with that okay so we've got this um our drain all mocked up here and it looks great but it is totally dry mocked and there's no glue on it so i'm going to take it apart and then reassemble it for you guys one step at a time so this is our p-trap we are going to put this on last you got this in a little bag of your supplies so it's actually a couple pieces here and you'll need to assemble that so you'll have get it out your p-trap and then this connection and these will probably be all free floating in your bag so you're going to put one of these this is a nut any plastic compression thing so one will be facing towards the linking end the other one will be facing out so they face away from each other and then you're going to put this little gasket in here and you want the gasket to be tapered towards the end of the pipe. You can see that we cut this. Don't cut yours yet. You'll do that at the very end to make sure that it's the right size. So we're going to set these aside. Let's see. 
there for now. And then we'll use these once we have our sink lined up. This part, let's see if we can get it out of the wall. So we've got our santi. This is going to feed into the, um, the drain. And then this is a vent to let off any gases and air. So we're going to take this piece out. We're going to use some Teflon tape to connect that. And then we will glue all of these black ABS pieces together. Your, um, what do you call this? Riser. Riser is going to be, um, it needs to be eight inches, not an eight inch piece. It's actually, you can see it's a little more. It's about one and a, eight and a quarter. Um, but what you want is eight inches from when it's connected to the next piece. So. So the first thing, let's see, take all these pieces apart. All right, hopefully I can assemble them back in the same order. So it's here. And I'm going to start with this one because it's got the Teflon tape. And so that's kind of one of the easier pieces. All right, so we're going to take this vent and we are going to connect it to this piece with the Teflon tape. And so if you've never used this stuff before, it's a little bit finicky. You have to be kind of gentle with it. Put this around nice and firm to make that watertight seal. Okay. And then let's get this. Keep holding it firmly so it doesn't unwrap until you're already turning. And this one, you'll have to do it pretty firmly. It kind of fights you. And you can see how far you're getting by the threads inside as well. So, all right, I have reached the end of that. So if you have a little bit of Teflon tape sticking out at the end, that is okay. Let's see, I've got two threads. Do I need to tighten it more? It's good. All right. It just has to be hand tightened. Hand tightened. Okay. So that's that part. The next piece you can see we don't have any screws on the inside of this. Um, so that is going to need to be glued. So we've got our ABS glue here. That is going to glue to, let's find the right piece. Which piece Your is this? Your eight inch riser. Oh, we're go. going to push it all the way in. Okay. So you have this connection actually will work for two different sizes of pipes. So you're going to push this one into the deeper connection. Um, so don't put glue on the larger part. Put your glue inside here on the smaller part. And we're going to glue both pieces. Show me that inside in the okay. part. We want to put glue in here yes not here this is too wide this is for a two inch pipe we're doing the one and a half so it's going to go in here get your crusty glue open and um as you can see here i didn't mention it earlier but i do have a cardboard down on my workspace this is very important to protect your cabinets so please make sure you have cardboard plastic something that's going to prevent any drips scrapes and um injuries to the cabinet in here and then we're not going to drip it on the floor. <laughs> and then we'll get this piece as well. You don't need a ton of glue. Okay, and then get those in firmly. And I like to hold them for a minute before I let go because I, in my experience, they sometimes push each other away sort of weird vacuum gets created. So just make sure it's really on there and you've pushed it all the way to the end. Okay, the next part is gonna to be to the sand tee. So same thing, we're just gonna ABS glue both sides here. I'm going to do, I like to do the inside pieces always first because you can set those down. You cannot set down a piece that you've put glue on the outside of. So got it in here. Could set that down without making a mess and get the outside of this one. 
Okay, again, you're going to push it all the way in and hold it just for a second, just for the glue to kind of set up and make sure that it's solid and it doesn't push apart. All right, and we've got this piece of the Santee now is going to go onto your um, wall spout. And what you're going to want to do is get your oscillating tool and you will cut this ABS about an inch and a half that you're going to use your oscillating saw to, or not your oscillating tool, I'm sorry, your reciprocating blade. And we're going to cut this. This will make a lot of vibration when you're cutting, so be sure to support it and hold it um, firmly as you're cutting so you can get that nice straight cut. So now we're going to get our sand tee on here. And this, some glue over here on the outside okay. and did get a little bit on the escutcheon so try to keep those as clean as possible just visually all right and then we're gonna firmly get this back and you want to make sure that you're straight that slide back, can you see? It's very awkward back here with your hat on. Okay, that's as far back as I can get it to go. Just hold that for a second so it doesn't pop up. Make sure that you are straight. Okay, so you do have a little bit of workability. It's not two seconds. You have about three minutes before it's really fully cured but you don't want it to be drying as you're moving it around. So really work quickly, get it into place, and then it takes about 30 minutes for all this other part to be fully cured so that you can uh, work around it. So the last piece we have is this part over here, and this is going to be what connects to the um, P-trap eventually. We're still not gonna connect the P-trap just yet, but we will put some glue on this and get that into our Santee. We're gonna connect the P-trap once we have the sink because that has to go straight up into the sink drain and we don't know quite where that's going to end up yet or how far in it'll go so we will do that part at the very last let's get this glued inside see our handy cardboard is really being put to good use here And then again, firmly, just make sure it's all the way in. Just kind of hold it for a couple seconds to set up. And it should be good. Make sure that you close your ABS glue every time you're not using it. And try to get, keep the lid clean so you can get a good seal on it. And so that this glue will be fresh for the next student who uses it after you. All right, so Corey just pointed out to me, I thought this was actually one piece. This is another piece that you will have in your assembly, so we need to make sure to glue it on here. So let me open this back up. Good thing someone cleaned this so it opens so nicely. And don't be too stingy with the glue either. It is important to make a good seal, so if you can't see it on there, Add a little more. Okay, and you can see it's just collecting on our cardboard, so that is doing its job. Okay, so now we're gonna put this thing together. The first thing we're gonna do is connect the drain. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is get some of the plumber's putty. Um, we had to microwave ours for well, about 10 seconds. 10 seconds just to warm it up. It's very cold and so it becomes very difficult to work with. So you may need to heat yours up a little bit. Don't nuke it, but just, just 10 seconds, just a quick little warm up. And then you're gonna work it in your hands, just like Play-Doh, kind of smells like art class. Um, and you're gonna you're gonna roll it till you make a little snaky like this and You will wrap that around. This is the basket part of your drain. You will wrap that around the underside Like this this one already has it on there 
once you wrap that around it, you're gonna kind of warm it and smush it into the metal, kind of flatten it down. And what this is gonna do is very similar to our Teflon tape. It's gonna help create a really nice seal. And this does a better job than using um, silicone or caulking. So you really, this is probably the most quality product that you can use for this. So it creates a gasket. So we're gonna keep that on there. We're going to take our sink and put this basket in. And then we will connect uh, the other pieces on the other side. So just gonna set that there. Okay, so we've pushed our basket in here. Now, once it's in, you want to push it in as hard as you can. You really wanna get as much contact as possible on the other side. So I'm pushing with my hand that's inside the sink and I am pulling with my hand that is outside the sink. And there's a little bit of this plumber's putty that's kind of oozing around on the inside, that's okay, we'll scrape it off after. So just push it in as firmly as possible first, and then we will put our ring on. And when you put your ring, you've got several parts. You've got the rubber gasket. You have actually a very important, not disposable, cardboard gasket or paper, and then your metal gasket. So you wanna put the, the paper gasket in between the metal and the rubber, and that's gonna help the metal turn and tighten without tearing the rubber and pushing it out of the way, which would of course ruin your seal. So we're going to put these on here. And from the inside, you still wanna be pushing as hard as you can while you tighten this. So we're just gonna hand tighten it first, see how far we can get. And you'll see in here that it's probably gonna start pressing out some of that plumber's putty. All right, so we'll tighten that as much as possible. And let's see. let's see what that looks like from the inside. So you can see that for one, I'm not perfectly centered here. So I am gonna to wanna to back this out and move it a little bit. And then we can also see that it's starting to ooze out on the side, which is okay. So let me just unscrew it a little bit to try to center that a little better. And then we'll keep going. Let's see. It's a little tricky. Tighten. So, if only there were a tool. So it turns out there is a special tool to use to tighten this. However, we don't have one. So we are going to use our channel locks. And we're just going to get two of these little nubs at a time. We don't want to get any more than that, or you might lose some skin on your knuckles. And we're going to hold the drain very firmly. And then we're going to turn and just see how much we can get this tightened up a little more. Let's see. It's a little bit tricky to do it this way, but it can be done. As we're tightening, it's squishing out the putty here. And we can see also if we're still centered or if we're starting to drift. So I'm just gonna scrape all this putty off. And you can just use your fingernail to kind of scrape it out of there. but you can see that there's still a little room. So I'm gonna tighten that up just a little more as we go. You can see that my drain is turning at the same time and we don't want that. So, let's see. So to get this fully tightened, you can use this uh, basket wrench and this you can see it'll just lock on here and that'll give you a little more ability to tighten it on um, while you're, while you're working here. Then what we will do next in this assembly, you will need a gasket, a little plastic gasket that comes in your kit. You'll also need this white downspout and your golden um, connection here. So put that gasket in there and we are going to connect this to the bottom of our drain. You don't need any adhesive or special plumbing tape for this.
the gasket is the part that does a lot of that sealing. But you do want to hand tighten it as tight as you can. And then we're going to take this other gasket, this black one, this red gasket, and we're going to put these in. These are going to be facing down, and these are going to connect to our P-trap once we drop this in the counter, as soon as we attach our faucet. So now we are going to install our faucet. So get it out of the box. So you've got your main uh, faucet attachment. This little arm here will hold your sink from getting too unruly. Um, then we've got obviously the temperature control handle, turn it on and off, and your hot and cold water lines. We've got this plate here. This plate converts it from a three hole to a one hole. You can see that this has three holes here. Corey informs me this is called an eight inch spread. When you have this on a smaller, like a bathroom, then it's a four inch spread. So sometimes you want an extra hole for the hot water, a hole for the cold water, and then a hole for the faucet. And so you may have seen those kind of faucets where they don't have just one control like this one, but they've got two separate faucet. So that's why we have all these extra holes on here. However, this is a single hole. So we put the conversion plate on. I'm going to take the plastic piece and put that over this metal piece. And we'll line it up here on the center hole. We're going to leave this one over here, this lonely one by itself. That's going to be for a soap dispenser later and we may cover that up. Next, we're going to thread these through. You may have to do them one at a time in here. And we're gonna get everything lined up. Um, before we connect on the other side, we are going to want to let's see here, get some of our plumbing putty. There was a piece, there's a piece that you will find. I can't find it now, but there's a, there's a silver piece that you'll have with your faucet. Um, it looks very similar to this, but it's silver, and it would be for a single hole faucet if we weren't using this. That piece you can disregard, you will not need it. So you only need the pieces that we are showing in this video. So make sure, let's see, you can feel how it lines up underneath. There's these holes, so you want to make sure they're lining up. But before we get them locked in, we're just going to take a little ball of plumber's putty. And this is going to help just prevent the sink from slipping and sliding around. So we don't need a ton. We just want a little ball just on each side of, yeah, I dropped it, on each side of this faucet here. So I'm going to put this on the metal side so that I know it's going to stay where I want it to. And then just a little glob over here on the other side as well. Now it may look like I'm really struggling with this, but I have a lot of room to work. So this, there's a reason why we're doing this now instead of underneath the sink where you'll be so cramped, it'll be really hard to move around. Now I'm gonna line these up and start pressing this in here. And I can feel it kind of connecting with the putty. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to get your gold washer and you have to kind of put this on one hose at a time. You can't get both of them through at the same time. And then we will take that same thing one at a time. You can't get both of them at the same. And then we will Get this nice and flush and hand tighten it on. Almost there. Make sure as you're doing this, just check all your, your side again. Make sure that the black piece and the silver piece over on the sink side stay lined up. Mine's just popped out of alignment, so I'm gonna get it back in there. There we go. There, that's where it needs to be. 
just keep checking. You don't want to tighten it all the way and then find out that your silver piece and your black piece have come apart. You want it to be as centered as possible and as straight as possible. Once you get that part as tight as you can with your hand, then you can go ahead and get your Phillips and tighten these little screws into the sink and those kind of just create a counterbalance and really lock it into place. You do not want to use your driver to tighten these, just use a screwdriver tip and hand tighten. Now we are ready to drop our sink in the counter. All right, so right before we drop our sink in, you may notice that these hoses are really short for the water lines. So we're gonna go ahead and extend them so they can actually reach down to our water valves. So just put on these little extenders here and you're just gonna hand tighten them. And it just makes our lives easier to do this before we put all this down here and have to work around all those obstacles. Another thing that you're going to want to do before you drop your sink in is tighten these brackets. These are going to hold the screws that have the clips to hold it to the um, sink. So you'd want to just make sure that as you slide these in that these will be tightened around it. So I'm not going to do all of them just yet, but just as an example, we'll do that. And then you just kind of squeeze it down. You can see when I squeeze it, it creates pressure, kind of wiggles it. So you'll just clamp it a little harder so that it actually stays in place. Once we drop this in, we will turn this around and it'll hook in under the sink. And then we'll just get a little flathead and tighten that until it really locks into place. The last thing that we're going to do before we drop it in is put a bead of silicone under the front side of the sink. Because of the way our cabinet is, we won't be able to put clips on this front side. So we'll need to put silicone and then a weight on it to make sure we don't have any lifting and there's no gaps where water could get in. That's all I got. Yeah. Oh, um, I don't think I'm going to drop it in yet because we want to place the clips. And do we have the clear silicone? So we can't do this. Okay. So we'll finish. We'll have to finish filming this tomorrow. So they didn't quite finish everything. Um, they did get their baseboard and their scribe molding on. And one of the things you want to pay attention to with the scribe molding, so you want to keep it flush at the top and bottom. So he did get it a little longer out the top, but he had already nailed it on. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, trim that down later when they get back in here. So the one thing that, that he did do is he ran the baseboard all the way up against the cabinet. So we had him because he still had to put the, the scribe molding on. So what we could do is take the scribe molding, hold it up there, trace it, and then cut it with your oscillator so you can slide the the uh, the scribe molding inside there. So there was a quick, easy easy fix for him. Um, how's, how's this baseboard look to you? So the baseboard looks, looks nice and clean. That's exactly what you want. Um, so... He's got his corners um, still to paint up, so he's got it all cocked and the, all the nails holes cocked. So he's just got now he's got to come back and just touch it up. So that's that's something that that they're going to do today. Um, the AC was hung, so all you're going to do is put the bracket on there and just hang the unit off of it, and then the AC technicians later will come and and hook it up. Gotcha. So that's nice yep, it's nice and level. You want to make sure it's level, and that's. Pretty much all you got to do. Trim around the door. Again, he, uh, he's he got it all nailed off. He's got it all patched. And now he's, we just got to come back with some touch-up paint and, it's, and clean it up. So she, she's got it all wired up now. Everything looked pretty good. But uh, we just uh, we kind of just ran out of time. So so today we're, we'll get that screwed in and get the cover plate on there and uh, finish that off today. Same thing with the sink? Same thing with the sink. Um, we just got to set our P-trap inside there. I believe everything's been glued in there. And once we get that P-trap set in, we'll get our fill lines attached. The uh, faucet's nice and tight. And uh, 
and we'll be done with that. So now, now since you're ending your, your project, now's the time to start paying attention to all the small details and start catching them uh, before you start doing your punch list. Um, and it'll just make your punch list a lot smaller. So just, I mean, just cleaning, just, just, the the small, just the small things like the drywall that's built up on the windows, start cleaning that off. I mean, just go around the project and start taking a look and see what you can fix now before we come and do a punch list.